So project title is real-time bird species identification using audio signal processing and machine learning. Uh, next slide. So our main aim of a project is to identify the birds by their calls. So the bird sounds data were collected from Senocanto repository and pre-processed by separating it into audio and noise signals, followed by data augmentation, and then which are converted into MFCCs. So, and then are fed into the CNN models for training. So our model reached 70% uh, accuracy for uh, real-time data. And our tech stacks include Python libraries called Libroso for audio feature extracting, uh, TensorFlow Keras for building and testing models, and uh, TechInter for the app user interface. Next, over to Logesh. Accurate knowledge of the identity, the geographic distribution, and the evolution of bird species is essential for sustainable development of humanity as well as biodiversity conservation. Birds being difficult to photograph, Sounds and sounds offers uh, better possibilities for inventory coverage. Competitions on bird species identification are conducted on recording a very large number of bird sounds, making it possible to recognize most species by their sound and, it, and to train deep learning models to automate this process. A number of challenges have made this task extremely difficult to tackle. Most prominent ones are background noise, multiple birds singing at the same time, difference between mating calls and songs, variable length of the sound recording, large number of different species. Despite these challenges, an accuracy of 80 to 90 percent is best obtained accuracy in these competitions using state of the art technique. Pre-processing of audio files is essential for feature extraction. The generation of good input feature is vital to the success of the neural network. The first step is to convert the mp3 files to dot wave files as mp3 files are in a compressed format and it is sampled to uh, 22,550 hertz. Here we look at the pre-processing of chorus corax. The original signal is passed through a Sprengel mask in which these original signal is split into three second noise and three second uh, signal chunks. And then data augmentation is, press, uh, is done in which two signals of the same class and three random noise signals are uh, superposed. And the resulting signal is passed to uh, passed through a time shift and pitch shift. And then, uh, and then the resulting signal is then again passed through an MFCC conversion. And here we have uh, here for the MFCC. We have we have used a hanging window with a hop length of five uh, of hop length of 13 and the uh, and the number of mfcc coefficients are 13 and then the frame size is around 512. now we'll explain about the training part for training we're using convolutional neural network which comes under deep learning we're using deep learning to uh, over machine learning because deep learning learns features by itself so it, it, it helps in learning more complex things and uh, this is the structure this is the architecture of the of our convolutional neural network in the first convolution, in the first conversion layer, we are using 64 filters, which is th uh, each each is three cross three, and activation function is redo. We are again repeating it with 32 filters, and uh, we are doing a max pooling to reduce the dimensions. And batch normalization is done to normalize the output and uh, from one layer to another. Again, we are repeating with the 32 filters with the same filter size. Max pooling is done with the same parameters, and again batch normalization is done. So this zero is repeated thrice. So we are using three convolutional neural network units, and we are uh, using an MLP at the end to uh, flatten it and softmax function is used to uh, show the probabilities of each class. These are the training uh, specifications. We, are, we used 5000 samples and uh, for training and for validation 1500 and for testing we used 100 uh, per class, 100, 100 recordings per class. Number of classes is four birds and one we, no we included noise also as a class and these are the hyperparameters we chose. Uh, we found them using grid search to find the best hyperparameters. Batch size is 8, epochs is 24. We found that more epochs get better results, and 24 was a decent one. Optimizer, we chose Adam Optimizer. And for loss functions, pass category cross entropy um, proved as good. And learning rate, we use 0 0.001. Uh, uh, learning rate higher than this uh, gave um, uh, like uh, gave le less accuracy. For activation function, we use Relu. It gives non linearity properties and softmax for the output layer. And things we tried. Cross validation, we tried cross validation to get a more accurate validation accuracy. And class imbalance, we solved manually by choosing the uh, samples uh, in equal number. 
for signal noise suppression, we tried one more mask named Elastic Mask, but spherical mask gave better results. Overfitting was happening. To solve that, we uh, revert, we returned back to a simple architecture and we used to drop out probability of 0 0.3. And batch normalization was done, as you saw previously, we used batch normalization after each convolutional layer. And we increased the epochs stepwise so that we were able to monitor the uh, accuracy change and we were able to uh, do early stopping so that um, we are able to stop at the right accuracy. Now, Nanda will explain about uh, the further things we tried and the prediction factor. Continue. I'll go over some of the things we did differently compared to similar projects that have been done before. So we created something called a sound data generator that uh, handled all, the, all our data augmentation. It was derived from the image data generator class of the KRS library. So basically image data generator lets us augment images in real time, uh, as such as uh, image rotation, flip, flipping, etc. Thus it gives entirely unique data each epoch. So since, but since we are working on sound data, we modified it to accept sound files in wave format as input. We also added custom functions to perform augmentations that were uh, such as a time shift, a pitch shift, same class noise and signal augmentation, etc. This helped us to greatly extend our data set and make our model more robust. Okay, another point of difference is we class separated the noise files too. This is because we found that performing noise augmentation with all the classes was detrimental to the overall accuracy or in our case. So we limited the noise augmentation of a bird sound clip to noise clips obtained from the same class of the bird. This increased our accuracy quite a bit. And lastly, we found that when predicting clips of long duration, a lot of it was ambient noise without any sound, bird sounds. And since our original model wasn't trained to de detect that, uh, it tried to classify the noise portion as a, birds, as a bird too, which is of course not correct. So what we did to avoid this was we added a new class called ambient noise and populated with the noise, cl noise clips that we obtained during signal noise separation. We then trained the model with this newly added, added class. Next slide. Uh, you can see the comparison of uh, three different models we created uh, and the parameters chosen for them on the right side. And model one is our primary model. It gives us the best result with an accuracy of 69%. Model two and three are just comparisons to show how varying the parameters affected the performance. And you can see the confusion matrix of uh, model one below. The first, uh, first row is zero because that's the noise class. <laughs> and we don't consider it to be a separate class and it only aids in the prediction of the four bird species therefore it's completely zero and okay so these are the images obtained from the corpus corax signal uh, abino mentioned so these are passed to the cnn model and as they are being passed the predictions are being made at the bottom and as you can see the noise has two hits so but we can remove the noise and Corvus Corax has the most hits, it has six hits, so it's the final predicted blow. Okay, so I'll be demonstrating the GUI we made, uh, which is used to make the prediction. It has two options, one is top door and uh, one is to record real, in real time. So in this box, we need to mention the number of seconds we want, it, we want to record. I'll be giving 10, so I need to press this button. But before that, I'll, for demonstration, I'll be playing a Corvus Corax sound uh, in my phone, which will be recorded. As you can see, the recording uh, is over, so it is make it start. It has started to make the predictions. For each clip, it will show the MFCZ it is created, and using the MFCZ, it will predict the bird. This is the bird that has been predicted. Correct, correct. An image of it is shown, and for more info, you need to press this button. So as you can see, total number of clips predicted is four, and it all four are predicted as correct, correct. And these are the MFCZs that are used. Okay. No, the, uh, the Wikipedia page of the bird Corvus Corax will be shown. As you can see, common dragon is Corvus Corax, which is shown. Now we'll try with the upload option. For uploading, you need to press this button. And you, need, you can upload any recording which was already uh, in the system or which was already recorded. We are using raw audio that is without any data documentation. So this is just the real uh, raw audio. I'll be uploading um, a recording of Paris Major Bird. The recording will be played.
and again uh, MFCs are shown for each clip and based on MFCs it will make the prediction. Okay, so Paris major is the prediction predicted work as you can see six clips are used and uh, uh, five years predicted as uh, Paris major. Again MFCs are shown for each clip. Uh, 